Ayurveda Khan, chapter number 78. So, so far we have seen Shatrukna punish Mantra by dragging her over the floor. Her companions have run away to Mother Kaushalya and Shatrukna is not yet done punishing Mantra and Kaiki. Verse 19. Sa bali balavat krodhat grihitva purusha rishabha kaikim abhinir bhartsya bhabhashe parusham vacha. The mighty and the best of men, Shatrukna, seized with fury, forcibly caught hold of that hunchback and censured kaiki with harsh words. We have already seen a couple of chapters ago that Bharata, as soon as he hears Kaike's words, gives her a very sharp rebuke. Sage Vashishta, Sumantra, Siddhartha, King Dasharatha himself pleaded to Kaike to rescind her boons and there was absolutely no change in her whatsoever. But when Bharata censured her, there was a particular difference. There was a change. She got to understand that what she did was wrong. And therefore, Valmiki does not expand on the words that Shatrugna said at this moment. Because that change has already happened in Kaiki. Therefore, there is no need for her to realize that what she did was a mistake. However, if there are two people in this world who can make Kaiki realize that what she has done is wrong, they are Bharata and Shatrugna, who is a mirror image of Bharata himself. And that is the reason why Shatrugna rebukes Kaiki. But since that change has already taken place in her, Valmiki does not elaborate it. But we see that Kaiki takes shelter of Bharata and asks Bharata to intercede for her. The very person who rebuked her just a couple of chapters ago is a person whom Kaiki seeks to protect her right now. On a side note, we should know that sometimes Valmiki reveals certain things. Sometimes he reveals the same facts a little bit later and gives another explanation for it. Sometimes he just names the event and does not bother to describe them and that is his writing style. Verse 20 Shatrugna bhaya samtrashta putram sharanam agata Kaike, deeply distressed at those harsh and grievous words, was very afraid of Shatrugna as she sought the protection of her son Bharata. So Kaike is wondering who knows what else Shatrugna might do with his ire. And therefore, sad and sorrow stricken, she runs to Bharata and prays to him to save Mantara and herself. Now, it is the Kshatriya code of conduct that if anybody comes to them for protection, they are supposed to offer it. And even though Bharata was not in agreement with Kaiki, he does give her shelter. Now, there is another tattvam behind this. Shatrugna represents the side of the Lord that gives punishment in return for the sinful actions of a person. Bharata shows the merciful side of the Lord. So Bharata and Shatrugna, they behave as two sides of the same coin. They are non-different than each other. The punishment is given with a lot of love, with a lot of mercy. And Bharata over here is advocating even for the most sinful of all people. Because of Mantara and Kaiki, the whole of Ayodhya was plunged into deep grief. 
and because of Mantara and Kaiki, Rama, Sita and Lakshmana were now walking about in the forest. Because of those two, King Dashratha lost his life. Because of Mantara and Kaiki, the whole of Ayodhya was deprived of the company of Lord Rama. And yet the Lord is extremely kind and he forgives the sins. If only we decide to seek his shelter. In Bhagavad Gita 1866, Lord Krishna says, Sarva dharman parityaja mam ekam sharanam vraja aham tvam sarva pape bhyo mokshasyami ma sucha. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Bharata is now following the Aham Tvam Sarva Papebhya Moksha Syami Ma Sucha portion of the statement. In the purport it is mentioned that there is no need of strenuous effort to free oneself from sinful reactions. One should unhesitatingly accept Krishna as the supreme savior of all living entities. With faith and love one should surrender unto him. So Kaike surrendered to Bharata with faith that Bharata will do that needful. And let us not forget that the Lord is Sukhridam Sarva Bhutana. In Bhagavad Gita 5.29, Lord Krishna says, Bhuktaram Yakna Tapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Sukhridam Sarva Bhutanam Gnatva Maam Shantim Rachati. A person in full consciousness of me, knowing me to be the ultimate beneficiary of all sacrifices and austerities, the supreme lord of all planets and demigods and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities, attains peace from the pangs of material miseries. So now how can such a kind and loving person be against someone? This is not possible. Since the Lord is Sukhridam Sarva Bhutanam, He is the best well-wisher, the best benefactor of all living entities. So keeping that benevolent aspect of the Lord in mind, Kaikeyi approaches Bharata to intercede for her and for Mantara. Now how does Bharata reply? Verse 21. Tam Prekshya Bharata Kruddham Shatrugnam Idam Abravit Avadhya Sarva Bhutanam Pramada Kshamyatam Iti. Seeing that enraged Shatrugna, Bharata calmed him down and said, Among all living beings, women are not to be killed, hence, she is to be pardoned. So Bharata sees Shatrugna as Kruddha, he is extremely enraged. And he says, Pramadha or a woman is not to be killed. And he says, Kshamyatam, please pardon her. Now, one may wonder, why did Rama kill Tataka? She is a woman, why did Rama kill Tataka? Why did he allow Lakshmana to mutilate Shurpnaka? Why? Something seems to be contrary. The reasons why Rama killed Tataka are very clearly mentioned in Balakant. The reasons why Rama allowed Lakshmana to mutilate Shurpnaka are also very clearly mentioned in Aranyakand. And we will just touch upon it very lightly so that this point is made clear and then we'll go on to the next verse which will clarify everything else a little bit better. When Rama killed Tataka, he was under the guidance of Rishi Vishwamitra and Dashrata had asked Rama to follow the wishes of Vishwamitra completely. Therefore, you can just say that Rama was being a good student and he merely followed the orders of his guru, Sage Vishwamitra. But that is not sufficient, I understand. And therefore, Vishwamitra provides the further reasoning to Rama and he says that for the sake of cows and brahmanas, for the sake of protecting cows and brahmanas, Rama is supposed to kill Tataka. 
Then he says you are supposed to do your duty and protect the Varnashrama Dharma. He also says that as a prince you are supposed to protect your citizens and this lady is causing havoc in uh, your kingdom. Therefore you need to do something about it. And all Rama says is that my father has asked me to obey your words. Therefore I will kill this Rakshasi Tataka. And that's it. Now let's go to why Shrupnaka was allowed to be mutilated. Shrupnaka, the younger sister of King Ravana, was a very wicked woman. She first goes to Rama and asks Rama to marry her. When Rama rejects her, she goes to Lakshmana. And then Lakshmana rejects her and then she comes back to Rama. And then she says that this lady Sita is the cause of all her woe and she goes about to eat Sita. At that time, it was Rama's duty as a husband to protect his wife. And moreover, it is his duty as a supreme lord to protect his supreme devotee Sita. And therefore, he asked Lakshmana to mutilate Shrupnaka. That's it, not to kill her. Just to mutilate her in such a way that she would just go away and she will not harm Sita. Of course, Sita herself is extremely powerful. But... When she has surrendered to Rama, she will not exert her powers. And we will see more about that in Sundrakant. We won't see that in Aranyakant. But in Sundrakant, all those things are mentioned in greater detail, in much more beautiful detail by Sage Valmiki. So anyway, coming back to this particular point, Bharata says that women are not supposed to be killed. But he substantiates his statement with the next verse. Verse 22. Hanyam aham imam papam kaikim dushtacharinim yadi imam dharmiko rama na asuyen matra ghatakam. Nothing would give me greater pleasure than to take the life of the cruel kaiki deeply stained with crime, mother of mine though she may be. But Rama would hate and shun me as the impious matricide. So, matra ghatakam, that means to kill one's mother. Even if that mother is someone full of dushtacharinim or very evil in conduct, a woman of wicked deeds who is so sinful, papam, even then... The Dharmatma Rama, the Dharmika Rama, the righteous Rama will not support the killing of one's own mother. He will not support it. And that is the reason why I am not going to kill Kaiki. Because Rama would not support this act. So even though Bharata is obviously capable of doing it, but he does not do it. He restrains himself so that Rama gets the glory of forgiving Kaikeyi. Rama gets that glory. You see, the great devotees, there were many of them who were extremely powerful. And yet, they abstain from doing certain things so that Rama gets the glory. For example, Sage Vashishta tells King Dashrata that Sage Vishwamitra is more than capable of killing Subahu, Marij, Tataka and every single person. Yet he wants Rama to get the glory and hence he is asking for Rama right now. This is mentioned in Balakand. Sita says that she is capable of burning the entire city of Lanka and Ravana and she's capable of reducing everyone to ashes but she is not doing so because she wants the honor and glory of killing Ravana to go to Rama. Hanuman says the same thing. The sages of Dandakaranya forest take the shelter of Rama and say, even though we are capable of destroying the demons, we are not going to do so because we have taken shelter of you. So you take care of us. We are not going to take care of us. So this is a very beautiful nature of the devotees wherein they sacrifice their own happiness, their own pleasure, just so that Rama is glorified. Rama is pleased. Rama is praised by every single person. 
Now just imagine if Bharata had killed Kaiki, Rama wouldn't have been able to advocate for her in front of King Dashrata at the end of Yuddha Kant. When Mother Sita had gone through the fire ordeal and all the devatas had appeared in the sky. Lord Shiva tells Rama that King Dashrata is also there. And then King Dashrata and the sons have a beautiful reunion. And Rama says, oh dear father, please forgive Kaiki. And Dashrata says, Kaiki is very fortunate to have you as her son. And of course, King Dashrata forgives Kaiki because Rama himself has advocated for Kaiki. And how can Dashrata not do Rama's bidding? It is impossible. Therefore, even though Bharata has the power to kill Kaiki, he refrains from that action just so that Rama is glorified later on. Rama is pleased later on. It is Bharata's personal wish to kill Kaiki, who to him is the embodiment of sin. And yet he refrains from doing so, just so that Rama is glorified. Next, there is another reason why he does not do it. Verse 23. Imam api hatam kubjam yadi jana tiragava twam cha mam chaiva dharmatma na abhi bashishyati druvam. If that virtuous Rama hears that the hunchback woman has been killed, it is certain that he will cease to talk to you or to me. So in the previous verse, Bharata calls Rama as Dharmika and here he calls him as Dharmatma and he says that if the Kubja has been Hatha or the hunchback has been killed and if Raghava gets to know that the hunchback has been killed by us, he will certainly, Dhruvam, he will certainly, he will surely, he is 100% certain never to speak speak to us. So over here, you can feel the love that Bharata has for Lord Rama. The way he craves for Rama's melodious voice, the way he craves to hear that lovely voice, to look at his lips when he speaks, to look at his eyes when Rama speaks. You can See how Bharata craves to hear his brother speak to him. That beautiful, sonorous, dundbi like voice with those beautiful lotus petal like eyes and his beautiful reddish lips. He is speaking certain words and Bharata is mesmerized with the beauty of Lord Rama. Even though he is just as beautiful as Lord Rama, he is still extremely mesmerized by Rama's beauty, by the eloquence of his speech, by his soft spoken words. And he just wants to listen to Rama speak to him. So there is one part of the devotee that is completely thinking only about Rama's glory but there is another part of the devotee that just craves to hear few words. That's it. Just a few words. Just one glance of the Lord. There is another part of him that craves, that yearns for something of that sort. And Bharata says with such deep anguish that if we were to do any harm to this mantra, the very person who instigated the exile of Lord Rama into the dreary woods for 14 years, the very hunchback woman who ensured that King Dashrata would die, if Rama were to hear that the two of us have killed that mantra, he won't talk to us because he will say that this is not right. It is not according to dharma. Why? 
because kaiki had taken the shelter of bharata we just read that couple of verses ago so therefore it is up to bharata to protect kaiki and mantra and if bharata allows kaiki or mantra to be slain then rama will say that that is not right and he will not speak to bharata anymore and bharata can bear any pain except for the pain of hurting his brother he can never bear that one pain and now shatrughna understands what bharata is all talking about because he has invoked the name of ram therefore bharata knows that shatrughna will do the right thing and shatrughna realizes that he has punished mantra and kaiki enough and if he takes that punishment a little further and kills them both then rama is not going to be pleased therefore look at how he behaves in verse 24 भारतस्य वचः श्रुत्वा शत्रुघ्न लक्ष्मणानुज न्यवर्तिता तथा रोषात् ताम् मुमोच च मन्धराम hearing the words of his brother bharata shatrughn the young brother of lakshmana restrained his fury and released mantra so valmiki call shatrughn over here as lakshmananuja the younger brother of lakshmana because he wants to emphasize the fact that just as how lakshmana never acts contrary to rama's wishes shatrughna too is not capable of acting contrary to rama's wishes so when bharata explains that this is contrary to rama's wishes he restrains his anger he controls his anger and he releases mantra Let's look at what happens to her in verse 25. Sa pada mule kaikeya mantara nipapataha nishvasanti sudukarta kripanam vilala pacha. Mantara fell at the feet of Kaike breathless and weeping piteously. Just a month ago she was instigating Kaike to demand her two boons of the king and said that O queen ensure that you take the boons from king dashratha under all circumstances and mantra made sure that kaiki's heart was as hard as stone so much so that when dashratha crawled on the floor and begged and pleaded and fell unconscious and chanted rama's name throughout the night it had absolutely zero effect on kaiki When Sage Vashishta spoke there was no effect on Kaiki when Sumantra and Siddhartha spoke to Kaiki and rebuked her for her harsh actions there was zero effect on Kaiki however when Bharata and Shatrughna rebuke her there is a lot of effect when Bharata and Shatrughna rebuke Mantra she is now in tears she is now crying copiously and she is taken shelter of kaiki who interceded for her by going to bharata who rebuked her so harshly just a little while ago and another very beautiful description given by valmiki over here is nishvasanti the fact that mantra was not able to breathe properly her breath was coming in fitful gasps and valmiki is giving that comparison that just as how dashratha fell unconscious dashratha was gasping to breathe that night when kaiki demanded her boons now look at mantra she too is gasping for her breath she too is doing that even though it is not even in the same scale because the love that dashratha has for rama is much more than the love that mantra has for herself and therefore it is not even in the same scale but still the actions are somewhat similar and that is the beauty of valmiki's writing that he shows that mantra got what she deserved verse 
शत्रुघ्न विक्षेप विमूढ़ संज्ञा समीक्ष्य कुबजा भरत माता शनै सद आर्थ रूपा क्रौचिम विलग्ना इव वीक्षमा seeing that hunchback woman thrown down by shatrukna and lying senseless in anguish like a female croucher bird caught in a net looking in different directions kaiki gently soothed her so kaiki is the noble partner in guilt and she is consoling mantra as best as she can they were both guilty and both of them were punished and now we are going to move into another new chapter wherein bharata refuses the crown and he goes off to chitrakuta with his vast retinue so we are going to start another phase of ayodhya kand from next chapter onwards mangalam kaushalendraya mahaniya gunapti chakravarti dhanurjaya sarvabhoomaya mangalam